Let it in. 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 Now if the window's open, please keep your arms and head inside the car at all times. Welcome to the North Carolina Transportation Museum. Here are a few safety rules before we depart on our journey around the museum. Please remain in your seat at all times while the train is in motion. The crew needs to walk down the aisles, so these need to remain clear. Please keep all heads, hands, and arms inside the car at all times. If you would like a window open, please let a member of the train crew assist you. There are east and west signs to help you find points of interest along our train ride. The Master Mechanic's Office on the east side of the train contain the offices of the Master Mechanic, Payroll Clerk, Office Clerks, and officials for the Danville Division of Southern Railway. The back section served as a warehouse for the shops and Danville Division. Anything from tools to paper towels could be obtained here. Renovated in 1980 and again in 1996, the building now houses administrative offices, the history of transportation exhibit, wagons, wheels, and wings, and the North Carolina Transportation Museum gift station. In 1896, warehouse number three served as the original madhouse. After the new Master Mechanics Office was built, the third building on the east, built in 1924, is the flu shop. It was originally used to store and repair the flues of a steam locomotive. A flue is a tube that allows heat and smoke from the fire to pass through the boiler, thereby heating the water to create steam. There could be anywhere from 200 to 350 flues inside a boiler. When the railroad changed to diesel power, the building was converted to an electrical shop. Since its restoration, it has served as the automobile display, bumper to bumper, featuring cars from 1900 to 1979 in period settings. The current building to the east, built in 1913. It has a basement which houses five tanks capable of storing 52,000 gallons of oil. Locomotive crews obtained a supply of oil before leaving on each main model as well. The oil house a master mechanics office in the 1950s. It is presently used by museum maintenance personnel. It was converted for use as a radio routine 13. The structure to the east was used for drying, screening, and storing river sand used on locomotives. Sand is used for traction in wet or icy weather on a steep grade or when pulling a heavy load from a complete standstill. It is used by both steam and diesel locomotives. Just south of the sand house is the foundation of the coal tower. The tower was built by Fairbanks Morse and was operators used chutes to or could accommodate four engines at one time. The area to the east of our train is where the stockyards were located. Animals destined for market would be taken off the trains to be fed and water here. A federal law from the 1880s stated that no livestock could be moved by rail for more than 28 hours at a time without a five-hour rest stop. The pens could hold 20 carloads of livestock. Animals are no longer hauled by train. Instead, trucks now carry this commodity to market. The pens were dismantled in 1960. Well, from the late 1890s, workers on the railroad, however, would pick up this animal and not breaking the law. Past the stock pens were the transfer sheds, located just at the point where we will end this part of the ride. Truck to rail car, helping local merchants who did not have their own railroad spur to send and receive goods. These sheds were rated the largest north of Atlanta because of the amount of freight handled in a given year. The transfer sheds, along with the stock pens, were torn down in the 1960s. I 
Ladies and gentlemen, this train will be making a stop at the roundhouse. Again, this is purely a courtesy to those who do.